unlike the last two weeks, today's word, well, it's not in our gospel reading, though it is present conceptually in much of it. Not surprising given that it is such an important word, concept really, factoring in so much of what Christians do. The word you may have guessed is Bible. I felt it was important to talk about this book before we move on to other words. It plays a big part as a source of the vision of God's reign that we heard a couple of weeks ago is foundational to the word Lord. People turn to the Bible as a way to nurture their faith. Plus, the next words we'll be encountering are read through a lens in, of how people interpret various texts. So let's look at this word, this concept, this book. Now I say book, but the Bible is really more of a library. This is important because a book is usually, well, one genre. The type of book influences how it is approached. It could be a novel, poetry, a history, a collection of legends. And the Bible is all of these and more. In it, there are genealogies and prayers, wise sayings and words of challenge. And that impacts how I experience the text. I read a psalm differently than a prophetic text. The context shapes my experience, as does when it was written and for whom. Is it a response to a situation like a letter? Or is it a reflection on an experience, like a gospel, written long after the events it refers to? In this regard, each gospel, though a narrative, isn't a biography, it's a theology. The particular gospel writer's answer to Jesus' question, who do you say that I am? Each gospel is a reflection on Peter's response. What they understand, you are the Christ, the son of the living God, to me. This is why the Bible has become so important to so many people. Across the whole library, you experience an evolving theology. The Old, or First Testament, an exploration by the tribes of Israel of who the living God is and how they are in a divine covenant. That aspect of covenant or relationship is also key to those of us who identify as Christian. The books of the New or Second Testament do more than outline Jesus' way, but explore who he is and well, what it means not just to believe he's the Christ, but how we are changed by being in relationship with him. And like other sacred texts, the Bible has had both an individual and a communal impact. For generations, it's been experienced as a source of wisdom. And this is why we give it pride of place. The stories are a way of knowing both who we are and who we can be. And this is Barry Lopez's point about stories. They're a way in which we care for each other. They are a source of identity, both grounding us and pushing us. And so the Bible is like a cut gem. You come to a story one day and you see something, and then, well, you notice another facet the next time you look at the same story. The story hasn't changed, but you have. And what's going on in the world has changed as well. Through the Spirit, the Bible has been a medium by which we've been engaging in a dialogue with the one we call God and each other for millennia. In this, the Bible is a gift. And in this, the Bible is a challenge. Historically, we've given the Bible a lot of weight, especially as Protestants. And I wonder sometimes maybe too much weight. I wonder if we've missed Luther's rally of sola scriptura. 
We've misused it because the saying was a critique of Catholic emphasis on church teaching known as capital T tradition, as well as a desire to get back to the core story rather than the layers of practice that have built up over generations and centuries. But just as our core story was obscured, I wonder if we have missed Luther's point and over time gone from meaning that the Bible should be a primary source for theological reflection to the Bible is the only authority. You see it when some want to treat it as a science textbook about the origin of the earth or a reliable history of Egypt and the Middle East, miraculous sea crossings at all, even when archaeological evidence suggests contrary. The Bible didn't come down fully cooked out of heaven. It was compiled over generations. Is it inspired? I believe so. But it was still written by people. No wonder it contradicts itself so much. And yet, it is a source of wisdom. But I don't feel it is exclusively so. I want to learn and grow from science and poetry and plays and novels and the scriptures of other faiths. Those are also sources of wisdom. Now, in the end, I take the Bible seriously, but not literally. A colleague likes to introduce the Bible this way. Now, whether you take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, listen to these words now for the meaning they hold for you on this day. I love that because it invites me to engage the reading as a source of wisdom, whether it happened or not. To seek meaning, especially as it applies in this particular moment. Because the Bible isn't static, it isn't fixed. Which is why we keep coming back to it. And as we have become ready to hear critiques in it that perhaps we weren't open to before. Say about sexism or racism, or caring for the environment. In this way, I wonder if Luther's critique through the words sola scriptura, well, perhaps they were an overstatement. Roman Catholic teaching at its core is biblical. For example, Simon being named the rock, well, it's Catholic proof text for papal authority. We don't see the verse that way at all. We affirm Peter's role, but not as if he's given exclusive authority, and certainly not through a succession of popes. But the idea that tradition, well, it's an ongoing conversation with these sacred texts, these sacred stories. We all come to them differently, trusting in the guidance of the Spirit, the Spirit's insight. And like I said about faith, well, ideally we should debate them with each other and grow in the process. This again is a model we receive from Judaism. Torah plus the prophets and other writings, well, they comprise the Tanakh. But there's also the Talmud, made up of Mishnah, the written version of the oral law, and Gemara, the rabbinic discussion of that law. The Talmud is taken seriously as a source of wisdom. Unlike seeing the Bible as fixed, as unchanging, this approach recognizes that it is a source of understanding for each time at each place. We heard in our gospel that Peter and the church as a whole were given keys to both bind and loosen. Well, that's what the rabbis do when they debate the law. I wonder then maybe if Jesus was making Peter chief rabbi rather than a pope.
Anyways, one of the differences between Catholics and Protestants is whether the emphasis is placed on the church or the Bible, each arguing that one gives rise to the other. Well, I argue it's a mutual birthing. The community writes down its story, and as it recalls its story, it is birthed anew. So you see, they really go together. A dialogue between people and the Bible and ultimately with God. So I vote that we keep going back to the Bible. Not as an unchanging, inerrant authority, but as a library of wisdom knowing that when we come to it with an open heart, when we read these stories in this way, they're sometimes more sustaining for us than food, uplifting our spirits and reminding us of both who we are and who we can be. Amen.